generation. Dates in the Bible don't quite match the marriage certificate. Welcome to another episode of Extreme Genes, America's family history show. It is Fisher here, your radio root sleuth on the program where we shake your family tree and watch the nuts fall out. And this segment of the show is brought to you by 23andMe.com DNA. And we got some very special guests today. I'm looking forward to introducing you to in about eight or nine minutes. Leading off with Megan Smolniak. She is a professional genealogist, well known within the industry, and she's also into army repatriation. And this is really interesting stuff. If you've never thought about what happens when they find the remains of a military person from the United States, States and they can't tie them to a family, this is where Megan steps in. She's going to explain some of the things that she does and how she gets some of the families back together and some of the unique stories she's got as we consider, of course, Veterans Day weekend. And then later in the show, we're going to talk to a guy named Chris Desmond. He's from Illinois and he's put together an incredible app. And this has to do with organizing all your photographs and keeping track of them by who's in them and the era and all this. And, you know, we don't usually get into a lot of products because they typically tend to come and go over the years. But he's got something going here that I think is pretty unique. So you're going to want to hear what Chris Desmond has to say a little bit later on in the show. Just a reminder, by the way, if you haven't signed up for our weekly Genie newsletter, it's absolutely free. Comes out every Monday. Thousands of people are already part of it. We'd love to have you on there as well. And we'd like to invite you to join our Patrons Club. And this is just very simply a very inexpensive way for you to support the show. And there are all kinds of benefits involved in that. We give you a little love on the show, on the website. We also share our podcasts early with you and give you a couple of bonus podcasts each month and an Ask Me Anything live YouTube session each month. So you can sign up very easily through ExtremeGenes.com. Just click on the Patrons Club or go to Patreon.com slash ExtremeGenes. And what a special treat today in the studio, David Allen Lambert. How are you? Hey, I'm doing great. Wonderful to be here again. Nice to have you with us in the studio. I, it's been a while. I'm thinking it's been at least a year since you took the time to swing by. Well, you know, I figured that I had to, especially after what's going on in your home these days. Why don't you tell our listeners <laughs> what happened? Well, this was kind of weird. I was invited the other night to speak to a group of about 30 people in, in my local area about family history and genealogy. And I talked about my scoundrel ancestor, who was actually one of my favorites, you know, just because he's a really interesting guy, former firefighter. And in fact, in my living room, I have a, a picture of him framed, a five by seven, sitting up on a little stand in a shelf, kind of like a box shelf, you know how that is? And next to it, I picked up a 19th century fireman's helmet, and I have it just resting in there on the very front tip. Mm -hmm. And it's been up there for several years now. And the other night I fell asleep in my easy chair because my wife goes to bed so early. And at two o'clock in the morning, suddenly that helmet came flying out of the shelf and it whacked the picture on the way down, knocked the picture over. Everything is fine. Nothing was damaged. But I mean, it made a noise that woke both of us up in other sides of the house. And I'm thinking something weird is going on here. Maybe he didn't like my characterization of him. Oh, I'm that not might sure. have a lot to do with it. I had to secure that a little bit better the next day to make sure he, he doesn't do that again. Uh, we had a little problem with my deceased grandfather. He used to do paint by numbers that one of my aunts gave us the painting she had because when she was talking ill of her dad, more in jest, it started swinging on the nail on the wall. So we have that now. By itself? By itself. Oh, dear. Yeah, don't That's have many I'm fault lines. About. Oh, yeah. So, you know, <laughs> not in many earthquakes out in Massachusetts. No. All right, let's get going with our family histoire news for this week. David, what do you have first? Well, the news starts off with Boston, Massachusetts. We're the home of the New England Historic Genealogical Society. We're very pleased to announce this week that we have a collaboration. Ancestry.com is joining us to bring forward the 150-plus volumes of of over 10 million names of the Catholic Archdiocese of Boston records. This is going to be a wonderful database for people to find their ancestors. 
Wow. And, you know, I say we're looking for volunteers to help index the project. I volunteered for Family Search's Worldwide Indexing, so now I'm recruiting people to come out and help any HGS. Right. Well, I want to say that, you know, people are always talking about DNA tests, and one of the many companies out there that offer DNA testing, MyHeritage, they have a Thanksgiving gift for any of the listeners out there. It is available through November 23rd. Instead of paying $99, they've slashed that turkey <laughs> down to fifty nine dollars. Fifty nine bucks. Yes, that's the best price out there, which is fantastic. I'm really not sure why it's news. You know, Prince Harry is soon to marry a gal by the name of Meghan Markle. Well, they're cousins through the Queen Mother. You know, Prince Harry's great grandmother. That goes back to the 15th century. Don't really know what the big deal is. <laughs> I don't I, know either. I, you know, I've got this on ExtremeGenes.com, and it's like, why is this news that somebody is related from back in the 15th century? We're virtually all related from back at that level. My wife and I have multiple ancestors from the 17th century, and as I tell my children, if they're ever alone in a room, they're never really alone. They're with family. <laughs> well said. Well, my next story has to do with people that have facial hair. Now it's in vogue again. In fact, there are many people that go out to grow these fabulous handlebar mustache like their great grandparents that you might have seen in the 19th century. But if you look at your photographs, you might notice in the early 20th century, there was not so much facial hair. Yeah, why was that? Well, they claimed in the 19th century that it was a way to prevent dust and dirt and it protected men's skin. By the 20th century, something called microbes come up and they think that things are hiding out in your beard oh. or food <laughs> or disease. So needless to say, the clean shaven look was the way of the man of the early 20th century. And that's why it changed. Well, my genealogy blogger spotlight this week goes out to genealogylady.net. This is a blog by Deborah Sweeney, who often writes about family letters and family diaries. It just goes to show you any listener out there can start a blog and share the experiences of your family. And don't forget, if you're not an NEHGS member, you can join American Ancestors and save $20 on your membership by using the checkout code EXTREME. Well, it's been fun being in the studio with you, Fish. See you soon. All right. Thanks so much, David. And coming up next, we're going to talk to Megan Smolniak. She's involved in a thing called Army Repatriation, Genealogy and Unidentified Military People as we celebrate Veterans Day this weekend on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Did you know that Family Search Family Tree is available through a powerful new mobile app experience? That's right. Now you can view, edit, and even add information to ancestors in your family tree whenever and wherever you are. You no longer need to wait to get home or make a date with your computer to view or update your family tree. You can add details to your tree when visiting with family or when capturing details from a trip to the cemetery. You can share new family history discoveries from classroom settings. Settings. You can even make the most of your time when waiting for doctor appointments or car repairs. Get started today by downloading the free Family Search Family Tree app to your Apple or Android device. Visit familysearch.org slash tree app to get the Family Tree app for free. Exploring and expanding your family tree has never been more convenient. Visit familysearch.org slash tree app to download the Family Search Family Tree mobile app today. Hi, Genies. It's Scott Fisher, host of Extreme Genes, with an invitation for you to join our brand spanking new Extreme Genes Patrons Club. Now, the Extreme Genes Patrons Club is where, for as little as a dollar a month, Genies everywhere can take advantage of Extreme Genes rewards, such as early access to our latest podcasts, members-only bonus podcasts, acknowledgement on ExtremeGenes.com, and special monthly live online question and answer sessions with well-known family history experts. Catch visits with Genie Technology stars such as David Allen Lambert, photo detective Maureen Taylor, DNA expert CeCe Moore, and many other experts and storytellers. If you find yourself craving more stories, more ideas for digging up your dead, more inspiration, the Extreme Genes Patrons Club is for you. The rewards start at just a dollar a month. Find out more now. Just go to ExtremeGenes.com and click on our special Extreme Genes Patrons Club link at the top right. Or go to Patreon.com slash ExtremeGenes.
Extreme Genes is sponsored in part by 23andMe.com, a personalized genetic service that helps you understand what your 23 pairs of chromosomes, your DNA, say about you. 23andMe.com gives you a snapshot view of your DNA with more than 60 detailed reports on your health, traits, and ancestry, plus tools to explore and compare your DNA with family and friends. 23andMe.com is the first and only genetic service available directly to you that includes reports that meet FDA standards. Here's how it works. Order your DNA kit from 23andMe.com, provide your saliva sample from home, and mail it back to a CLIA-certified lab. Then you'll be notified when your reports are ready online. You'll also receive ongoing reports as new genetic discoveries are made and as 23andMe.com is able to clear new reports through the FDA. See why more than 1 million people are experiencing their genetics with 23andMe.com. Order your DNA kit today at 23andMe.com. And we are back. It's America's Family History Show, Extreme Genes and ExtremeGenes.com. Fisher here, your radio root sleuth. And this segment is brought to you by 23andMe.com DNA. I remember the first time I spoke with Megan Smolniak. She is one of the great adventurers and storytellers and researchers in family history in the country. And she's into Army repatriation. And I'm going to let her explain exactly what this is. Hey, Megan, welcome back to Extreme Genes. How are you? I'm great. Thanks so much for having me back. You know, I'm thinking about this with Veterans Day weekend at hand. The things you're doing are so important. Talk to people who don't understand exactly what it is that you do about Army repatriation. Well, it's essentially no man left behind in action. You know, we make that commitment that we will make every effort to recover our soldiers. And I say soldiers just because I work Army cases, but of course this pertains to service people from all of the different services, whether you're Navy, Marines, whatever. But it's this effort, years after the fact, getting to use new technologies like DNA to try to recover and identify the remains of soldiers who are still unaccounted for from past conflicts. So the majority of cases involve the Korean War and World War II, but also Southeast Asia, so Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, and even occasionally World War I. That and is amazing. So what's, the, what's the earliest you've ever done one for? You know, this wasn't for the Army per se, but I actually worked on some um, Civil War cases once upon a time. But in terms of my Army repatriation work, it's World War One cases. I've done, oh, I'm going to say about a dozen of them. Wow, that is unbelievable. I'm going to take a break, though, from that. I do want to hear about the Civil War thing. What were you doing with that? That had to do with the submarine that went down, the USS Monitor, and when they finally managed to pull it up from the ocean floor, which I want to say was something like 2004 or something, much to their surprise, they found two skeletons in the turret. And so then it was a question of could they identify which of the sailors that went down those two happened to be. So that involved some sleuthing. Um, well, actually, it's, some things haven't changed. Um, it's one of the things that you notice when you work on a lot of military cases is that we get veterans from around the world. It's often immigrants and children of immigrants who serve. And so that was true in that case. I wound up researching soldiers or sailors in that instance who had come from everywhere from Scotland to Denmark. Uh, and I've seen a few native-born, that kind of thing. But these days with my Army repatriation cases, you work cases around the globe. Sure, sure. Now, World War I, you said you've done about a dozen cases of those. Just take us through the process of what happens. Who reaches out to you? What entities say, hey, I need a little help, Megan, and then what do you obtain from them to help you, and what do you do with that information? Um, the Army actually forwards me some information. One of the reasons behind this, the genealogical reason that many of your listeners will probably be familiar with, is the fact that there was a fire back in 1973 that yeah. destroyed a good chunk of our military personnel records from the 20th century, basically from about 1912 up into the 1960s. And so you're, you're, you're prompted to work on a new case with fairly basic information because so many of the records were destroyed. So you get the name of the soldier, you get uh, usually their date of birth, although even that can be iffy. In fact, even the name can be wrong. Um, you get the place that they enlisted from, which may or may not be where they were really from, in case they migrated. Right. And then you usually get the names of one or two people who were considered their next of kin, 
Most often it's going to be apparent, but as you get a wide variety of cases, um, it can sometimes just be an acquaintance. It just depends. And so with that information, you're off to the races. And what you have to do, you have to find what's called a PNOC and SNOC, primary next of kin and secondary next of kin. And there's a very strict hierarchy of who qualifies for that. It's almost like air searching work. Sure. And then you have to find three relatives with the same mitochondrial DNA as a soldier, one with the same Y DNA, and hopefully you look for somebody with, you know, who's fairly closely related for autosomal purposes as well. So maybe children or siblings, that kind of thing. So you're telling me they found the remains, they got the DNA, they think they have an idea of who it is, and, and then you're trying to prove or disprove their conclusion? Almost. Um, the caveat I have to offer is that they haven't always found the remains. Uh, because, for example, with Korea, which the initial efforts were focused on Korea, there were about seven, 8,000 who were still unaccounted for from Korea, which is a large number, but also finite. It was achievable. And so in the case of Korea, we actually tracked down the families of all of those men. And I say men because I've only had one case for a female after all these years. Mm-hmm. Um, but we, we tracked down the families of all of those people so that even going forward, when remains are recovered, the first they can thing they can do is run the, um, the sample against, you know, this database, basically, they've constructed of relatives' DNA samples. But for other conflicts, for the World War II, these days, most of the cases are World War II. It may be that they have remains. It may not. It's, it's, a, it's a little bit up in the air. But more and more of my cases, I've noticed the pace of identifications really escalating here over the last year or so. So more and more of them, I do think, are remains associated ones where they have an educated guess that they have the remains of Soldier X, and so they asked me to research that soldier. Wow. I mean, what a fulfilling thing for you to do with your genealogical skills. Well, I happen to be an Army brat. Yeah. <laughs> so I absolutely, yeah, my dad's a retired colonel, and, you know, he served in Vietnam, and we're very fortunate. He came home. My cousin Dami didn't. My dad went and identified him at Dover, and... Um, you know, even in that instance, although we lost him, he came home. At least we weren't left wondering. And these people were reaching out to, you know, they've been left wondering 50, 60, 70 years yes. what happened to their loved one. And so, yeah, it is very gratifying to, to be able to assist with this. Now, let's talk about the World War One cases that got the Medal of Honor. And this is a fascinating story because we're talking a century old case now or a couple of them. Yeah. One involving a Jewish uh, soldier and another an African-American. Yeah, they had been overlooked. They really had earned um, the, the Medal of Honor, but they had been overlooked for literally almost a century. And so the Army came to me, it was in early 2015, and it was looking as if they might finally both receive it. Um, but of course, you know, there's a ceremony at the White House. You want to make sure that the right people are in attendance, their loved ones. Uh, and so I was given those cases. In this instance, nothing to do with DNA. <laughs> there was no identification to make, but it was uh, making sure that the relatives had the opportunity to be there and find their uh, closest, you know, their next of kin. Um, the Jewish case turned out to be quite easy, really. But the African-American one was much more challenging. In fact, I wound up disproving what had been believed for a couple of decades in terms of who he was related to. Really? And so you went out and then disproved that branch. Was that a surprise to them? Yeah, it was, which, I, you know, it was actually a delicate situation. It made me uncomfortable because you don't want to burst anybody's bubble. And what I actually suggested when I discovered this is, can they please be invited as well? Because even though they're not related, it was a case of believing the story that Great Aunt Tilly told you. The people who were still alive just believed stories that their elders had told them. They really earnestly believed that they were related to this soldier. And because of that, they had sort of campaigned for him to get the Medal of Honor for quite some time. Ah. And so it didn't seem fair to exclude them, you know. They kind of were his family by proxy, if you will. Uh, It was only because of their dedication that this moved forward. So in the final analysis, yes, they were invited as well, which is very nice. And how did the new family receive this news, the actual relatives? Do you know what? The the fact of the matter is, unfortunately, he didn't have new family. His family had died out. Wow. All right. And what about with the Jewish family? That one was quite easy. He had um, some daughters who were still alive, and they were very 
proud of this. They were very easy to find. That was one of my quickest cases. It was interesting that pair of cases were polar opposites in terms of their genealogical difficulty. One was very easy. The other one, oh boy, I uh, <laughs> on the on Henry Johnson, who's African American soldier, I wound up digging through thirteen hundred pages of research. Wow, yeah. that's incredible. And and yeah. you were able to attend this uh, event as well. No, unfortunately not. Everything we do is for the family members. You know, we just participate in the process, but this is all about the family members and giving them some sort of closure. And yes, I know people say there's no such thing as closure, but there really is some peace of mind that comes from at least knowing what happened and where his or her final resting place is. So I think it's a worthy effort. And, and certainly a sense of pride when you find out that one of your people won the Medal of Honor. Yeah, isn't that so? I mean, it's long overdue. They had been overlooked, really, unfortunately, because of the way we, things were back then. You know, there were elements of racism. And, and um, in fact, the African-American soldier had received the Croix de Guerre from France. He had been recognized by France, but not by his own country. So it was nice to finally see that corrected. So overall, how many cases have you done in over how many years? Oh, I am, I don't know the exact number, but I think I'm somewhere in the 1280s. I think it might actually be accurate to say I've been doing it since the last century. I think I did my first <laughs> cases in 99. It may have been 2000. Um, but the case flow really has, it ebbs and flows. There have been times when I would wake up one day to a whole bunch of new cases, and then I can go six months without a case. Um, but the last year has been just steady. It's like a fire hose of cases. So it's just nonstop lately. Well, I don't think there's anything anybody could do more to honor our veterans than what you're doing. She's Megan Smolniak. You can go to her website at megansmolniak.com. That's M-E-G-A-N-S-M-O-L-E-N-Y-A-K.com. Thanks so much for your time, Megan. Thanks for all you're doing, and have a great Veterans Day weekend. Uh, Thank you. You as well. And coming up next, we're going to delve into something that Tom Perry and I have talked about quite a bit when it comes to preservation. That is, how do you deal with the metadata associated with all these photographs that you've taken and you've digitized? Well, Chris Desmond, my next guest, has come up with a great app that might work to solve that problem. We're going to get into that, how he got started with it, how you can get a hold of it. That's on the way in five minutes on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Scientific studies have proven that youth who know even a little bit about their family history perform better academically and have a greater sense of personal confidence and stability. Genealogy is its own incredible superpower that arms our children with super strength. But how do you get your child or grandchild interested in studying their family history? That kind of stuff is just for grandmas, right? Not anymore. ZapTheGrandmaGap.com leaps the generation gap in a single bound. Author Janet Havorka provides you with useful and timely advice on helping the young people in your life become engaged in their own family history. Janet has an entire collection of books to inspire the young and the young at heart in fun, interactive ways. She also offers creative tips and advice on her blog and in her free weekly newsletter. Stop by ZapTheGrandmaGap.com today to sign up for Janet's free email newsletter with 52 weeks of easy tips, free downloads, and order your set of resource books and workbooks. Looking for an easy way to show off your family history and share it with your family? Family Chart Masters offers beautiful custom pedigree art pieces and inexpensive family reunion draft charts in any design or size that fits your needs. With a free consultation at FamilyChartMasters.com, you can get started creating a new family masterpiece. Family Chart Masters has over 11 years of experience in creating and printing family charts. They can print any style of genealogy chart from any genealogy file and can create exactly what you're looking for. You'll work with a specialized and talented consultant whose goal is to make you happy. Decorative charts make fantastic gifts for all occasions. And with Family Chart Master's option of ordering duplicate charts at half price along with your original purchase at full price, you can afford to give a family heirloom to each member of your family. Contact Family Chart Masters today at FamilyChartMasters.com for your free consultation. Family Chart Masters will give the greatest care to your family history. And 
And welcome back. It's America's Family History Show, Extreme Genes and ExtremeGenes.com. It is Fisher here, your radio root sleuth. And this segment of our show is brought to you by LegacyTree.com. And uh, I've got a guy on the phone right now from Glen Ellen, Illinois. His name is Chris Desmond. And he is the creator of a fascinating new site. It's called MemoryWeb.me. Not .com. You go there, you're going to actually have to buy your own domain. But it's <laughs> MemoryWeb.me. And uh, Chris, welcome to Extreme Dream Jeans, nice to have you. Awesome to be on. Thanks, Scott. You know, once in a while, we, we run into new products that are out there that we like to share with people, although I would say yours, by definition, isn't all that new because you've been around pretty much as long as I have now, 2013. Tell us about how it works, what you do, and how you came up with this thing. Sure. There's three of us that founded the company, and back in that time, 2013, uh, I was actually just digitizing old photos at our house over the holidays. And uh, flipping them over, looking at all that rich detail of the people, location, date. And I wanted to have the details or the back of the photo details travel with the photo. So when I'd scan them, I'd I'd try to put them into the photo of the digital file by putting it in the title or putting it in different areas. And I was getting really frustrated because there was, you know, no good way to do that. And so I started looking around for different apps at that time that uh, allowed you to do that and was pretty disappointed. And we were kicking around the idea for a while, and we decided, you know what, maybe we should just go for it and do it ourselves. And that's when we actually filed uh, a couple patents on some of the ideas and and actually got a couple issued. And then just a couple years ago, we decided to develop the iOS app, and we have that out in the uh, App Store under Memory Web. That's amazing. You're absolutely right. You've actually identified a problem there that I think most people run into at some point because digitization is a massive project for most folks. I mean, I look back at my photos from the 30s and 40s that my mom left and my dad left, and while there are some, there aren't that many, but then as time goes on, they become massive. The 60s, the 70s, the 80s, you know, printed photographs, any old printed photographs, you scan them. How do you identify those? And like you say, how does that metadata travel with the pictures? What a great idea. Exactly. And, and the way we look at it, it, it's kind of like Dropbox meets Google Photos meets Ancestry, because <laughs> when you ask why have, we, why have we been around for a while? We actually, you know, when we developed the company, we started off going down the path of being a photo app, okay? A photo app on steroids of all these you know, different sure. things we can do. And then we realized just this past year, we're like, you know what? We're missing the mark. We should go back to why we developed the app and really focus on genealogy. So linking genealogy to your entire photo archive, having it organized, pushed to you, and being able to tag all that rich goodness, that's what we focused in on. And once we did that, the light bulbs are going off, everybody. And and when we were at a recent conference in August, people were like, where have you been? So (laughs) it's been great. That's awesome. So how do you deal with it? Uh, I have a picture, for instance, my wife's great-grandmother was part of a family reunion in the late 1920s, and it's just a long, massive crowd picture. It's one of those things that's like six feet long and about eight inches tall, and yep. there's 50, 60, 70 people in there, maybe more. I don't know. A lot of folks, how would you deal with something like that? Great question. And so, I mean, that's one of the photos I was trying to struggle with, because you try to put all those names in the title of a, of a, of a JPEG file, and you're done, because you lose the amount of characters. Right. So and that's part of the reason why we developed this. So what we do is, you, let's say you just take it the simplest approach. You take your iPhone, and you take a photo of the family reunion photo. So you have a pretty good photo of it, good high resolution. Right. iPhones are really great right now. They allow you to do that. What's the problem? If you took that photo today, it's today's date and the GPS location of where you took that photo. Right. That's not right. So you need to fix that. So right when you take that photo in the app, you open it up, and you're able to then change the tags and correct them. So then you can correct the exact date you have. You can actually put in the GPS location in of where the family reunion was at. And then you have your choice of how you want to do the people. So some people, when you have a long-running total of people that you're only going to put in maybe once in your collection, you might go ahead and put that all in the caption. You know, you can kind of go through and sure. do it that way. Or, or and... When you do have people that are actually part of your family or that you're going to want to make sure are tagged so you can navigate those things, you can then add the people tags in your collection. And that's one of the things that really makes us unique is because the tagging that we have inside the app, once you add those in there, those tags become navigational. So I'll pause on that for a second. Yeah. 
So we call those dot tags. And those dot tags, when you see a photo and you see the tags, people, location, date, you can select that tag and it'll take you to all of the other photos you have in your entire archive with the common tag. And then you can see all those photos with all new tags. And so the way that we work is that it's a web of photos that never uh, leave, meaning you keep on going from one area to the next. And so it's a way that we web your information so that you're just constantly excited about seeing your collection come alive. So you could actually take an era then and you can say, okay, show me all the pictures from, say, 1910 to 1919. Yep, we have a scroll that goes through and does that already, too. Or you can have a collection that does that. It just kind of depends upon how you want to see the information. We try to do all the heavy lifting for you so that your stuff, like, I mean, most people have huge collections of tens or hundreds of thousands of photos. And we want to make sure that that's all navigational, easy to find on your iOS device. Boy, I love the sound of that. I guess the question would be, have you figured out a way that we can digitize faster? <laughs> uh, you know, we actually, on our website, there are some quick tips on what to do. I, I love, if you happen to have those 1970s, 1980s photos, take the negatives to the, the camera shops and have them just take the negatives and make a digital copy. That's the most efficient thing. Sure. But for all those other photos, I mean, they have shoebox digitization and a bunch of other companies do that. We really come in and saying, okay, now they're digitized. What do you do with them? That's but right. We also, we also allow you to mass tag things. Because, I mean, what if you have a whole era, as you said, of photos and they might have the same location or the same date, you can tag 500 photos at one time with the same tag just to make it easy. Wow. I just love the sound of this. That's great. All right. So people can go to memoryweb.me.me. So memoryweb.me, just to clarify, is the website for the general information. You yep. can actually then get linked up. Um, the primary use we have is right now for iOS devices. So people have iPhones, iPads, right. something. Download that. But then you know, you, we also have a sign-in once you've done that on the memoryweb.me website. So I just want to make sure that's clarified. And we are going to be coming out with a uh, platform for Android, but that's in the works right now. Um, for, for what we charge, we allow you to have a host of your entire photo collection, and it's all private. So you get to try it out, kick the tires on for the first 90 days. But after that, you know, we actually have to pay for our, our storage and stuff. So sure. we just try to make sure it's a baseline charge, and it's $9.99 a year wow. for standard <laughs> resolution, or $14.99 a quarter, or $49.99 a year for the highest original resolution. And why that's important is many, many folks want to have that original photo, and they want to be able to keep it that way. And that links me to the one last thing I want to tell you about what makes us different. When photos leave Memory Web, we actually correct the tags in the digital photo so that they will travel with the photo forever. So when you were talking about that family reunion photo a little while ago, yeah. if you were to all of a sudden send that to a family member, the tags now are embedded inside the photo, corrected. And if you want to, you can have the tags on the photo. So if you wanted to post that photo to Ancestry or Family Search, you actually can have the tags appear just below the actual photo there. Sweet. Wow, what a great idea. He's Chris Desmond. He's in Glen Ellen, Illinois. He's got memoryweb.me. It sounds like a great product, Chris. I'm going to have to check it out. Thanks so much. Appreciate great to, it. Great to have you on. Talk to you again. Okay. And up next, it's Tom Perry, our Preservation Authority, talking about cheap and almost free things you can do that will make great Christmas gifts. That's on the way in three minutes on Extreme Jeans, America's Family History Show. Well, Genies, my personal family history researcher who sends me new information day and night has sent me some incredible new records and newspaper stories lately. Hi, it's Fisher, and the name of that researcher, by the way, is MyHeritage.com. It's the hardest working service in genealogy, looking for records of your family 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Yes, even while you're sleeping. How does it work? MyHeritage uses hundreds of algorithms to match your ancestors to over 5 billion records from around the world. 
world and with 97% accuracy. That means no more wasting time figuring out whether or not a match really is a match. I hear from listeners all the time who are shocked with how much information is accurately found and then passed along. And now my heritage will translate your ancestors' names into English or any other language you like from foreign records. In fact, it works with over 40 languages. No one else does this. Whether you're a beginner or seasoned researcher, you need MyHeritage.com. Extreme Genes is sponsored in part by 23andMe.com, a personalized genetic service that helps you understand what your 23 pairs of chromosomes, your DNA, say about you. 23andMe.com gives you a snapshot view of your DNA with more than 60 detailed reports on your health, traits, and ancestry, plus tools to explore and compare your DNA with family and friends. 23andMe.com is the first and only genetic service available directly to you that includes reports that meet FDA standards. Here's how it works. Order your DNA kit from 23andMe.com. Provide your saliva sample from home and mail it back to a CLIA certified lab. Then you'll be notified when your reports are ready online. You'll also receive ongoing reports as new genetic discoveries are made and as 23andMe.com is able to clear new reports through the FDA. See why more than 1 million people are experiencing their genetics with 23andMe.com. Order your DNA kit today at 23andMe.com. Legacy Tree Genealogists is a proud sponsor of Extreme Genes. Based in Salt Lake City, Utah, near the world's largest family history library, we've been working with genealogists all over the globe since 2004 to track down records, find your ancestors, and the stories that bring your legacy to life. We also analyze DNA test results, help you join lineage societies, and find missing cousins or heirs to property. Legacy Tree is the recommended research partner of MyHeritage.com and is the world's highest client-rated genealogy firm. Call us toll-free at 1-800-818-1476. Call now or register online to get a free estimate. Learn from our free genealogy tips on our blog at LegacyTree.com slash blog. Even experienced researchers can benefit from our proven and experienced staff of specialists who can bring new approaches to old problems. Legacy Tree Genealogists. We do the research. You enjoy the discoveries. LegacyTree.com. And welcome back. It's America's Family History Show, Extreme Genes and ExtremeGenes.com. It is Fish here, the Radio Root Sleuth. And we're talking preservation with our preservation authority, Tom Perry from TMCPlace.com. This segment is brought to you by MyHeritage.com. Welcome back, Tom. Good to be here. I know you are just worn out practically, and we aren't even into the holidays because there's so much going on at your store. And I know the deadline is like right here. In fact, it being so cold, I'm actually losing my voice, talking to people on the phone, having people come in. There's just so many things going on right now. But, yeah, you need to pretty much now fish or cut bait because if you wait past Thanksgiving, it's basically a crapshoot. You might be able to get your stuff done. You might not. So if you have some precious memories, whether they're photos, slides, film, any of those things, you want to move now, especially optical stuff, slides, and film because they take more to get them transferred and negatives also. Videotapes, you can wait a little bit longer, but any of the other stuff, you need to get it into your local transfer facility ASAP. Sounds like somebody might have to take a day off or a half day off or something just to get those into the various digitization shops around the country. And that's what a lot of people do. They keep procrastinating. So take a day off. Take one of your sick days and just set out to not be bothered by your phone. Turn your phones off. Put everything away. And just work on getting your memories together so you can get into your local transfer center and get them done. Yep. Now, I'm looking at this list. We've been talking off air about all the things that people can do on the cheap, either free or virtually free. There are all kinds of projects that people are going to value more than anything you could buy on Amazon. And let's go through this list a little bit, Tom. Okay. Yeah, because you buy somebody a flat screen TV. Hey, that's cool. They're going to love you for three years, and then they won't love you anymore. (laughs) But you give them family memories, and your kids are going to love it. Your grandkids are going to love it. The farther the generations go, the more they're interested in it. Like, look at yourself. If you had memories and photos of your great-great-grandfather and grandmother, you'd be thrilled to death. So think down the road that these things are going to last forever, and there's so many things you can do on the cheap. 
everybody's either got some old DVDs or CDs or even Blu-ray discs, or they're so cheap to go to the dollar store, you can buy the cheap garbage ones, which you would never want to use to put your precious memories on. However, you can get photographs, scan them, print them on your home printer, then cut them out and glue them on the disc and make ornaments for your tree. You can make mobiles to hang up, and they are so cool. Oh, and they're shiny on the one side, so they reflect all the lights. That would be fun. Oh, yeah. As they spin around on your tree, you'll have Aunt Martha on one side, and that shiny color that changes as it turns is great. And the funny thing about these is after Christmas is over, save them and put them in your garden in the summer, and they keep birds away from eating your crops. <laughs> You are amazing. You don't do this for your customers, do you? No, I just do it for myself. For yourself. Okay. And did you have an Aunt Martha, by the way? You've talked about her for years. You know, that is really funny. I've had several people email me and say, who is this Aunt Martha? (laughs) And I was just thinking one day in the old Dennis the Menace black and white cartoon, the little old lady next door, her name was Aunt Martha. And that just came into my mind, and I've used it ever since. I don't know of any Marthas in my family. Okay. Let's talk about some more free stuff or virtually free stuff people could do. Okay. One thing that's really nice is talking about photographs. You can go to the dollar stores, and you can get some pretty nice frames for a buck. And go and get your photos, put them in there, do different collages. I've even seen people that got, like, old wooden frames that get some photos that they had scanned and made prints on thin paper. They kind of almost do a paper mache thing, like put these different pieces around the frames and let them dry and then put a photograph in them, and it makes them so interesting. And the thing to even make them better, you can go either buy an app for your phone or you can go online and get free QR codes, those little square codes that you use on your phone, put them on the photographs, and set up a recording of Aunt Martha or anybody else, or when the kids scan it, they're going to hear Aunt Martha saying, Merry Christmas, or whatever the story is. Wow. All right, we're going to get more into these things we can do on the cheap or virtually free coming up in three minutes when we return on Extreme Jeans, America's Family History Show. Looking for an easy way to show off your family history and share it with your family? Family Chartmasters offers beautiful custom pedigree art pieces and inexpensive family reunion draft charts in any design or size that fits your needs. With a free consultation at FamilyChartmasters.com, you can get started creating a new family masterpiece. Family Chartmasters has over 11 years of experience in creating and printing family charts. They can print any style of genealogy chart from any genealogy file and can create exactly what you're looking for. You'll work with a specialized and talented consultant whose goal is to make you happy. Decorative charts make fantastic gifts for all occasions. And with Family Chart Master's option of ordering duplicate charts at half price along with your original purchase at full price, you can afford to give a family heirloom to each member of your family. Contact Family Chart Masters today at FamilyChartMasters.com for your free consultation. Family Chart Masters will give the greatest care to your family history. When was the last time you heard your grandmother's voice or saw your family enjoying life back in the 1950s or 60s? If the reason is you haven't known what to do with your old recordings, videos, and films, here's your answer. The Multimedia Center in Salt Lake City. We brought in a video project to the Multimedia Center, and overnight, they duplicated it to DVD so we could meet our deadline. The Multimedia Center, 2870 East, 3300 South, Salt Lake City. Open Monday through Friday, 10 to 6. Call 801-483-1717 or go to Transfer Duplication. Genies, it's Fisher with exciting news. The Weekly Genie, the official newsletter of Extreme Genes, is here. It's your Monday morning briefing on what's happening in the world of genealogy and family history and on Extreme Genes. Get all the details of jaw-dropping stories of discovery and keep up with the latest techniques in family history research. Get to know more about your favorite Extreme Genes personalities. And it's free. Sign up for The Weekly Genie now at ExtremeGenes.com or the Extreme Genes Facebook page. And when you do, you'll receive David Allen Lambert's top 10 tips for beginning genealogists from the chief genealogist of the New England Historic Genealogical Society. Sign up today for the Weekly Genie. All right. 
right, we're back at it. Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show and ExtremeGenes.com. We're talking preservation with Tom Perry from TMCPlace.com, our preservation authority. And we're kicking around some gift ideas. Now, as we mentioned, of course, you're just about on the deadline right now for guarantees that you'll get your more expensive stuff done. The videos and the films and the digitization and all the things that go with that. But there are things that you can do for virtually nothing. Or nothing, for instance, the QR codes idea that you mentioned briefly uh, last segment, Tom. Talk about that for a minute. I mean, there's ideas you can do with with QR codes that create, say, talking calendars. Oh, exactly. And on the extreme side, you can actually buy software, like we've talked about it all the time, Heritage Collector Software. They actually have software that you take the photos. You don't have to go and look for QR codes. They'll assign them to you. They'll tell you how to upload audio to them, how to upload video or whatever. These are not just generic things that exist on videotape or audio cassettes you've had transferred. These are things you can make up brand new. Like you can put on maybe your grandkids' calendar a QR code on their birthday, and then you make up a special message that says, Hey, happy birthday, Amy. This is awesome. You know, we love you so much. And tie it to that QR code through Heritage Collector. And then on their birthday, they pull out their iPhone or their Android and they shoot it, and there's Grandma wishing them happy birthday, and it just makes it so personal. It makes it so fun. (laughs) And, you know, think about it, too. Imagine somebody who's on their deathbed, and they want to leave a message for their family down the line. I mean, what a great way that they could do that. You know, and that's really important, too. If you have parents who are kind of getting a little bit older, now is the time you want to take advantage of that. Sit them down, run your recorder, record them, tell them to tell you about their family history. And if you have ones who are kind of shy, just make sure you don't let them know that your iPhone has an app that you can record them. (laughs) And just hit record because those things will be priceless down the line. Absolutely. Now, talk about the mugs we were kicking around during the break. This is kind of an interesting idea. Oh, yeah, this is fun. If you have a college, like say maybe your favorite college is Notre Dame or whatever, whenever they order mugs or different things like that, they order like maybe a half a million of them and they maybe only sell 400,000. Where do those other 100,000 go? They go to the dollar store. So go to your dollar store, and even if you hate the Dallas Cowboys, but they have a mug there that's got the clear wrap on it, and you can see there's a piece of paper inside that has a Dallas Cowboy logo. They usually will come off really easy. If not, just get an exacto knife or a single-edged razor blade and go along the bottom and break the little glue seal, take the tumbler off the clear part, take the Cowboys out and shred it, and then put your family photo, whatever you want in there, put it back on, put a couple of little dots of super glue, and you've got a really, really cool Christmas keepsake that costs you a dollar plus whatever the laser printer costs you at home. Wow. What a great idea. And if everybody had the same mug, you know, because the kids, they all want the same thing. Oh, absolutely. That'd be fun. Oh, yeah. You go buy a dozen of these, put different photos in them, and then some people have grandma, some people have great grandpa. And this is another thing that's good for the younger kids, which you mentioned. They can cut out the people in the photographs and put them in the mug. And they'll look really, really cool, and it'll be a keepsake forever. And you can buy a lot of them. You can find lockets that have somebody else's picture in that you could care less about. Take those out. Put your family in there. And there's just so many ways to buy stuff at the dollar store. Walk up and down all the aisles and get some ideas. And how about putting in an ancestral picture on one side and a little history of them on the other side on the mug? Oh, that's perfect. All right. Great stuff as always, Tom. And and good luck over the next few weeks. See you next week. Thanks. My pleasure. Hey, that's all we got this week. But if you missed any of it, of course, catch the podcast. You can go to ExtremeGenes.com, iTunes Radio, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio. We're there. And by the way, you can also download our free app from your phone store. It's good for iPhone or Android. And you can catch up on all of our past episodes. And if you missed anything or you're trying to remember something that was said, make sure you go to ExtremeGenes.com and check out the transcript of the show that's attached to the podcast. It makes it real easy to do. Hey, we've got another bonus podcast coming up real soon for our patrons club, so make sure you get signed up for that. I mean, it's real cheap and a great way to support the show. Go to patreon.com slash extreme genes or click on patrons club at extreme genes.com. Talk to you next week. And remember, as far as everyone knows, we're a nice, normal family.